Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We begin with Allah's blessed name. We praise Him and we glorify Him as He ought to be praised and glorified. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all His noble messengers and in particular on the last of them all, the blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. As we greet you from the studios of the Islamic Broadcasting Network, here in my native island of Trinidad on this, the seventh day of the month of Jumadi al-Akhirah with Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Last, uh, last week, Ayyamul uh, Ahad Sunday, I was invited to, for the first time ever, I went to Tableland, Tableland Masjid. Uh, we have something in common with Cape Town in uh, South Africa, Cape Town has uh, table mountains. <laughs> you can take a cable car to go up to the top of the mountain. But make sure you take a very warm coat because very cold and hold on to something. Otherwise, you can be blown off the mountain into the sea. <laughs> and that's, uh, they have, they call it the table mountains. <laughs> and we in Trinidad, we have table land. So I was invited uh, the Imam is a distant relative of mine, and uh, mashallah, oh, every chair in the masjid in the hall was filled to capacity. And, um, and uh, we had a nice time. I enjoyed my visit to Table Land and to uh, introduce them to the Quran. And uh, they're now organizing another lecture. Uh, I hope I will be invited. Uh, before Ramadan, inshallah. Then after the lecture in Tableland, we had nice uh, uh, chicken chicken pilau. And then I went next door. My, my cousin lives next door, but she was too ill to come to the masjid. Uh, so I, if you want to invite me to your masjid any time between now and Ramadan, I'd be happy to come. But just uh, take my number at the bottom of the screen, uh, 383. Uh, 6712, 383-6712. Uh, call me and I'll be happy to come uh, to your masjid between now and Ramadan, not during Ramadan. And after Ramadan, I'll be traveling for the rest of the year. Uh, just a reminder uh, that on the 9th of February, which is next next Sunday, Yawmul Ahad, I will be lecturing in Ravin Sabla. Uh, you know, Rabin Sab, there's a home for the aged, aged people. And then there's a masjid on the compound, Masjid uh, Baitullah. Someone donated that masjid. May Allah build for him a house in Jannah. MashaAllah. So that lecture will be at about 10.30, 10.45 after I'm through with my IBN program. And I believe they're serving lunch, yes. Uh, maybe another pilau, chicken pilau. Um, and I will be lecturing on, uh, again, the Quran and the moon, the methodology for reciting the Quran, particularly, particularly in the month of Ramadan, the most important sunnah of all in the month of Ramadan is to recite the whole Quran from cover to cover. Do you hear that? If you have never done it before in your life, can I ask you to do it? Do you mind if I ask you to do it? Don't be annoyed with me. 
This is the most important sunnah of all. In the month of Ramadan, the fard of Ramadan is to fast. The sunnah of Ramadan, the most important of all, is to recite the Quran from cover to cover. If you've never done it before in your life, why don't you start this time? What do you need for us to teach you? You do, if you sit down and do nothing year after year after year after year, how will you expect to learn to recite the Quran? Hmm? When the time comes and the angel calls you, you will not, it'll be too late to learn to recite the Quran. Don't blame me at that time. Don't blame me. Blame yourself. Okay? So this is a lecture in Rabbi Insab on February the 9th, which is next Sunday, uh, inshallah. Uh, be there for 10.30. I might be there for 10.45. And then uh, on uh, the Sunday after that, the 16th, again here at IBN, in the studio, we'll have uh, some sisters around the table with me. Uh, they have to, they have to six, decide who they are. And we're going to be discussing uh, uh, matters pertaining to women, matters pertaining to the family, matters pertaining to children, matters pertaining to the Muslim community, and the perspective that comes from women. Um, and if we cannot complete the subject in one session, we'll do another session. And those sisters who would like to come and join us, we'll put some chairs here, but uh, it'd be helpful if we know how many chairs we should put here because IBN has been asking me um, uh, if you can have 15, 20, perhaps you could put the chairs here. And you can sit down and you can even participate with questions during the, uh, during the session. So remember that is uh, Sunday the 16th of February here at IBN. You should be here by at least 8.15 because the session will start at 8.30. Um, I do want to have another session with youth. And to be a youth, you have to be up to 21 years of age, not more than that. And I do want to have another session with imams, and that is not yet arranged. And let me remind you about the class. I am having, I'm conducting a class at Jama Masjid San Fernando on the Quran and the Moon methodology for reciting the Quran. And this I've just completed, and now I begin with Quran and the stars methodology for study of the Quran, which may take me February and March, maybe two months, to complete. Um, and you're welcome to join us in that class. Uh, the last time I held a class in Trinidad was 12 years ago when I taught the Surah al Kaf, and uh, the Masjid Hall was was full. And now 12 years later, and I'm teaching another subject after 12 years, and it's also very important. And we probably have 20, 30 people attending. This is a sign of the times, yes. Uh, one important announcement now, and that is that uh, I will be traveling after Eid will fit to London. And uh, we have four important lectures coming one after the other. The first weekend after Eid will fit the first weekend, Saturday and Sunday, Yawmul Sabt and Yawmul Ahad, will be Birmingham. And that will be the last weekend of May. The second weekend after Eid al Fitr, which will be the first weekend of June, will be in London, at the University of South London. And our topics will be number one, Kashmir, the way forward. Number two, Jerusalem the way forward where we will respond to uh, Mr. Trump and his, uh, his plan for the Holy Land. Uh, number three, we will return to Surah al kaf and uh, to show Surah al kaf and its connection with Akhir al-Zaman. This is a subject we must never, never stop teaching. Surah al kaf and Akhir al-Zaman. And number four, the Quran and the Moon methodology for recitation of the Quran. And my insight into this subject is constantly growing. So if you heard my lecture in England about two, two months ago, three months ago, there's no new material coming out now, two new things I'm learning. So if you're in Europe, 
Uh, if you're anywhere else outside of Britain, uh, in Britain, outside of London, or if you're anywhere else you want to travel to London to be there, you can attend these four lectures. And I'm hoping that we can get the money to pay for the hall so you don't have to pay any registration fee. It'll be free lectures. And uh, you get a chance to attend all four lectures in London immediately after Eid will fit her. Now then, we have uh, uh, some time now to address a very important subject. Bismillah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I received a very important letter from a very important person in Belgrade. I won't mention his name, Belgrade, in uh, Serbia, the former Yugoslavia, the cap capital of Belgrade, who is the most important city in the Balkans. The Balkans, what's it, the meaning of the word Balkans? The Balkans will be that uh, group of countries located uh, in, uh, in that region of the world where Europe and Asia uh, come together. Uh, amongst them are Bosnia and Herzegovina, um, Albania, uh, Serbia, uh, Croatia, Slovenia, Montegre Montenegro, Macedonia, and so on. Um, so the most important city in the Balkans is Belgrade, and I have visited <laughs> I visited Belgrade twice already, and now they're asking me to come back a third time this year. And uh, I got this letter, very important letter that I want to read to you slowly, and then we're going to spend the rest of the time responding to this letter. Here we are, and he, although he's not Muslim, no, the a very important person who wrote to me is not Muslim, uh, but yet he addresses me with, Dear Sheikh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. There you are. This is the sign of a part of the Christian world which is drawing close to us and showing signs of love and affection for Islam. This is a sign that this man is Christian and yet he addresses me, and he's a very important man in Belgrade, incidentally. And he addresses me with assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We are writing to you concerning a specific issue. We do not know whether you are informed about the newly adopted law on religious freedoms of the Republic of Montenegro. Montenegro is a NATO puppet state. And its leadership, especially its president, Milo uh, Djukanovic, are corrupted. It is a real mafia state. And thus, it is practically permanently blackmailed by their Western masters. The provisions of Article 62 and 63 of the above-mentioned law that is the law on religious freedom, which is, uh, which w th these two articles aim to nationalize, to confiscate property of the Serbian Orthodox Church, which is a traditional church from the 12th century of almost all Orthodox Christians in Serbia of Serbian and a Montenegrin nationality. This is the Balkans. This nationalization or confiscation would include some of the most important medieval monasteries. This would lead, without exaggeration, to the elimination of the Serbian Orthodox Church in Montenegro. And the President Djukanovic spoke about that goal at a conference of his own political party. From the moment of the adoption of this law, religious processions protesting against the law are held every day all around Montenegro. 
but also in Serbia, as well as in Bosnia and Herzegovina. With more than 100,000 participants in Montenegro alone, and Montenegro has a population of about 600,000 people. Many Muslims take part in the process, in the processions, in the protest. Many Muslims take part in the protest. Although the property of the Islamic community of Montenegro is not threatened because there is an agreement between the state and the Islamic community, as well as with the Catholic Church and with the Jewish community, which excludes their property from the application of the law. But the government, the authorities, refused to sign such an agreement with the Orthodox Christian Church, the Serbian Church. It would be precious for us He's addressing me. If you could launch an appeal inviting Muslims from Montenegro and from the region, the, the Balkans, to express openly their solidarity with the Orthodox Church, Serbia, related to this issue, it would be a great contribution to the brotherhood. Listen carefully. It would be a great contribution to the brotherhood between the Orthodox Christians and Muslims. Did you hear that? This is a Christian. This is a prominent Christian scholar. It would contribute greatly to the brotherhood between the Orthodox Christians and Muslims. We ask you to intervene because we consider you to be a just person and to be a real friend. This is the letter I got, and as a consequence, I want to devote today's session to the Christian and the Muslim in Akhiru Zaman. The Christian and the Muslim in Akhiru Zaman. I have several books of mine which uh, all uh, deal partially with this subject. The most important is Jerusalem in the Quran. And alhamdulillah, I'm happy that I'm now getting some, some orders, complete sets of books, uh, autographs. Someone just came to collect two sets. Uh, this is the most important book which explains the subject of the Christian and the Muslim in Akhir. It was written 20 years ago, Jerusalem in the Quran. This also is a very important book for understanding the subject, namely Gog and Magog, an Islamic view of Gog and Magog in the model. And we will address the subject now in a minute. This one is my, one of my newest books, and this is crucially important for understanding the subject of the Christian and the Muslim in Akhir Zaman. It's the first, subject, first book on the subject Constantinople in the Quran. Here is a book which explains Israel's mysterious imperial agenda. And it is that mysterious imperial agenda of Israel that impacts on the subject of the Muslim and the Christian in Akhir Zaman. And the last book, of course, is the Quran, the Great War. And the West, that's the war which is now coming up. That's the war which is now coming. In order for me to respond to this letter from Belgrade, let us begin. What does the Quran say about the Christian and the Muslim in Akhir Zaman? If you are listening, and if you are in Bosnia and Herzegovina, if you are in Albania, if you are in Montenegro, if you are in Macedonia, if you are in Croatia, if you are in Slovenia, if you're in that part of the world, Montenegro, please listen carefully. The Quran has absolute truth, and it is from the Quran that we must get guidance. What does the Quran say 
about Christians and Muslims in Akhirul Zaman, in the end time. And we begin, and I have lectured on this subject, I have quoted this verse of the Quran 500,000 times already. But my critics, it, go in, it goes in through one ear, it comes out through the other. Either they don't want to hear, or they're too scared to hear, or it's not convenient for them to hear. But this is the word of Allah. And if we are explaining the Quran correctly, then this will survive. No one, no one, no one can destroy it. This will survive if we are explaining the Quran correctly. What does the Quran say about the Christian and the Muslim in Akhirul Zaman? The first thing, the first thing that we learn from the Quran is that the Quran tells us that there are two kinds of Christians, not one. The first is a Christian with whom we are prohibited from maintaining friendly ties and establishing an alliance. Prohibited. And the second is one who is our friend, who will be closest in love and affection for us who will be blessed by Allah with victories. And when he is victorious, we will celebrate. And that is also a Christian who follows Jesus, Nabi Isa salam, and Allah will raise him to a position of dominance over those who rejected Jesus, and they are NATO. NATO is built for the purpose of supporting those who rejected Jesus, the state of Israel. Mm. So now, what does the Quran say about the first group, the one with whom we are prohibited from maintaining friendly ties and becoming their allies? So, with whom we are prohibited from becoming a member state of NATO. And yet, all the sheep and all the cattle and all the goats and all the camels, deaf, dumb, and blind in the Balkans and in Turkey are members of NATO and lusting to become members of NATO and wait for day of judgment when Allah will throw you into the hellfire because you betrayed the Quran. That's, what the, that's the punishment that awaits you for betraying the Quran. Unless Allah forgives you, unless you make tawbah. What does the Quran say? It says, Ba'da'uzu billahi min ash rajim It says in Suratul Ma'ida, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu la tattakhizu al-yahuda wal-nasara awliya ba'aduhum awliya uba'd. وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّهُ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنَّهُ مِنْهُ مِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ صَلَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَذِينَ Let us explain. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا O you who have faith, faith in Allah. لَا تَتَّخِذُ الْيَهُودَ وَالنَّصَارَ أَوْلِيَا Do not take the Jews. And do not take the Christians as your awliya, as your friends and allies. Is Allah speaking about all Jews and all Christians? If you go to the rest of the Quran, then it becomes very easy to answer that question that Allah could not be speaking about all Jews when he says, don't take them as your friends and allies. And he could not be speaking about all Christians when he says, don't take them as your friends and allies. Why? Because elsewhere in the Quran, there are several verses of the Quran which speaks about Muslim friendship with Christians. 
which speaks about Christians and Jews who are believers? Yes. Uh, so you cannot say, don't take all Jews and don't take all Christians as your friends and allies. But the schoolboy who does not have the proper methodology for study of the Quran has come to the conclusion that Allah is speaking of all Jews and all Christians. Don't take them as your friends and allies. You will pay a price one day for your laziness in studying the Quran and the defective methodology with which you study the Quran by taking an ayah or a verse of the Quran in isolation and then coming to a conclusion based on that one ayah. That is the wrong, wrong way. And we're going to be teaching this next Wednesday, inshallah, at my class in San Fernando, Jama Masjid. Do come and join us there for that class after Salatul Maghrib. If Allah is not speaking of all Jews, and he's not speaking of all Christians, when he says, don't take the Jews and don't take the Christians as your friends and allies, then the question which arises is, which Jews is Allah speaking about? And which Christians is he speaking about when he says, don't take them as your friends and allies? And the answer is as plain as daylight in the words which follow, ba'aduhum awliya'uba, which means do not take such Jews and do not take such Christians as your friends and allies who themselves are friends and allies of each other. Are you listening to me in Bosnia? Do not take such Jews and do not take such Christians as your friends and allies who themselves are friends and allies of each other. Ba'aduhum awliya uba. And so the Quran was anticipating more than 1400 years ago that one part of the Christian world, not all, and one part of the Jewish world, not all, are going to have a mysterious reconciliation. And then an equally mysterious friendship and alliance. And today that has come about. Today that has materialized because of a strange new actor on the stage of the world called modern Western civilization, where Christians who broke away from Constantinople and came to the West and then proceeded to launch the Crusades. These Christians have formed an alliance with the Jews largely because of the work of the Vatican. And it is this Judeo-Christian alliance which controls power in modern Western civilization. And it is this Judeo-Christian alliance which has brought the Jews back to Jerusalem to reclaim it as their own 2,000 years after Allah had expelled them from Jerusalem and placed a ban on them that they could never return. They could never return. No. Hatta until when? Hatta is a footy hat yajuju wa majuj until Gog and Magog are released. Wahum min kulli hadabin yan silun and they spread out all over the world. And with their indestructible power, they take control of power in the world. And they corrupt the world. This, these are the people who bring the Jews back to the Holy Land to reclaim it as their own. And this has happened now. These are Gog and Magog. 
If you are in Bosnia, if you are in the Balkans and you don't know that, then study the Quran once again. I beg of you, my brothers and sisters, go back and study the Quran with tears in your eyes and tears in your heart. Bow down your head and beg Allah, beg him, beg him to guide you. Because otherwise the brainwash masses, the brainwash masses of the Balkans and of Turkey are going to end up in the hellfire because you didn't understand the Quran and you defied Allah's guidance in the Quran. Do not take these people as your friends and allies. These are the ones who established NATO in French Lutan, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. These are the ones who established it. And so you are not allowed to be friends and allies with such Christians and such Jews. You are not allowed to be a member state of NATO, to be a friend of NATO. And that is what Turkey is, despite all the drums that Turkey is beating about Islam and Islam and Islam and Islam. Turkey still remains firmly in violation of Allah's command in the Quran by being a member state of NATO. And all the Balkans are lusting to become members of NATO like sheep and cattle and goats and, uh, and camels. They have eyes and yet cannot see. They have ears and yet cannot hear. They have hearts and yet do not understand. And when you try to teach them, they block their ears. It's time to open your ears. So this is the first kind of Christian in the Quran. The one with whom we are prohibited from maintaining friendship and alliance. And these are the ones who are waging this war in Montenegro on the Orthodox Christians. These are the ones who now want to confiscate all the property of the Orthodox Christian Church, including all their monasteries. This is wickedness. And we, the Muslims of the Balkans, should stand side by side with our Christian brothers in responding to this oppression of those Christians and those Jews. Now, what is the second? The first are those Christians with whom we are prohibited from maintaining friendship and alliance. Which Christians? The ones who are members of the Judeo-Christian Zionist Alliance, who support the Judeo-Christian Zionist Alliance, I call them in Trinidad the Guaidos because they, they recognize Juan Guaido as the president of Venezuela, whereas we are resisting the oppressor in Venezuela and we support the government of Venezuela. But come election day and we'll see how the people of this country deal with the Guaidos amongst us. The second kind of Christian. The second kind of Christian in the Quran, Allah refers to them as room. He has a whole surah of the Quran entitled Surah to Room. He also speaks of these Christians that they will be closest in love and affection for Muslims. And finally, he says about those Christians that they will be the ones who will be following Jesus, Nabi Isa Islam while other Christians are following the Jardins, following Santa Claus. And he will raise these Christians above its position of dominance over those who rejected Nabi Isa Islam, the Jews. And these Christians will become dominant in the world. Let us now turn to this second kind of Christian. And you will see very clearly it is the duty, it is the responsibility, it is the obligation of all the Muslims in the Balkans. All that your brother Imran is speaking to you from distant Trinidad. In the Caribbean I'm speaking to you out there in the Balkans. This is your duty, this is your responsibility, this is your obligation in Bosnia and Herzegovina in Albania, in Macedonia, in Montenegro, in Serbia, in uh, Croatia, in Slovenia. 
in all of these parts of the Balkans, this is your responsibility if you're a Muslim, to stand shoulder to shoulder with your Orthodox Christian brother, supporting him in an alliance in solidarity against the wickedness of the government of Montenegro in waging war on the Orthodox Christian Church. So now let us turn to the second kind of Christian in the Quran. Allah speaks in Surah to Rum about a Christian people. And he says in Surah to Rum that they were defeated. They were defeated. A Christian people were defeated. But after this defeat, they will soon be victorious. Could this be Washington? Don't you have any sense in your head? Could this be London? This, could this be Paris? Could this be NATO? This could, could this be Western civilization? When the West has not as yet even emerged in history? Don't you have any sense in your head? And yet they go parading with a bogus scholarship trying to explain the Quran and misguiding them, the people misguided themselves. Deaf, dumb, and blind they are. Allah speaks about the Christian people. And they were defeated. And he says that soon they will be victorious. Who are these Christian people? It gets me so crazy, so mad. Yet you have these bogus scholars going out there misguiding the people. I ask you if you're listening to me and you understand this subject, go out there and drive them out with your scholarship. Take the truth and let the truth drive out this falsehood out of the way. This is Constantinople. Allah is speaking of Constantinople. Here we are, Constantinople. He's talking about Constantinople. Constantinople was defeated by the Persian Empire. And Allah is saying that Constantinople will be victorious. That is Rome. Constantinople was Rome. And when Constantinople is victorious, when Rome is victorious, وَيَوْمَ إِذِنْ يَفْرَهُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ At that time, you, the Muslims, will celebrate. If I'm wrong, tell me what is right. Come on and tell me what is right if I'm wrong, if you have the courage to stand up. Allah is speaking of Constantinople, whether you like it or whether you don't. This is the truth. I'm so sorry that I have to get so agitated, but... I I'm two steps away from the grave at the age of 80, and these people would not listen. They would not listen. They would not listen. They would not study the Quran. They're deaf, dumb, and blind, and they're misguiding the people, and they're themselves misguided. May Allah cause the truth to prevail, inshallah. Rome is Constantinople, and it is that room that Allah is favoring. And he says about that room that they'll be victorious. And on the day when they're victorious, we Muslims will celebrate. وَيَوْمَ إِذِنْ يَفْرَهُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ At that time, when Constantinople was victorious, the, the Prophet والسلام, was alive and he also celebrated. He also celebrated. And when the Orthodox Christian king of Ethiopia, Abyssinia, died, the Negus, he performed the Salatul Janaza for him. Yes, that's right. And so, room in the Quran with whom we are friends or Christians. But one part of that Constantinople broke away and came to the West and formed the alliance with the Jews. It is the part which remain behind, that is room. Not these idiots, these absolute idiots who are saying the part which broke away from Constantinople and formed the alliance with the Jews. That is room. You should take a one-way ticket to the moon 
show your face over there in the woman and don't come back to this world. You're so misguided. So then, it is clear. It is the orthodox Christian world which today is Rome. Whether you like it or whether you don't, that is the truth. And the Quran also goes on to say, again in Surah Al-Ma'idah, it says, لَتَجِدَنَّ أَشَدَّ النَّاسِ عَدَاوَةً لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الْيَهُودِ وَالَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا that at the time when the Qur'an was revealed and in time to come, you will find that those who had the greatest hatred and enmity and hostility for Muslims will be the Jews. And this was true at that time. And this is again true today. The, cause, the words of the Qur'an has come to pass. Yes. And also those who are in shirk, the most obvious form of shirk, and that was the mushrikun of Mecca and today modern Western civilization. Yes, this is the truth of the Quran. But then the Quran goes on to say, "Wala tajidanna akrabahum mawaddatan." لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّا نَصَارَ That you will most certainly find at the time when the Qur'an was revealed and in time to come that those who will be closest in love and affection for you Muslims would be a people who would proclaim we are Christians we are Christians. Who are the Christians? Who are the Christians? Be careful with the Quran. Be careful. Let me warn you. Be careful with the Quran. Don't bring bogus scholarship to bear on the Quran. When we explain the Quran correctly, it will prevail. You cannot stop it. Who are the Christians? Who? At the time of the Prophet and in time to come, would be closest in love and affection for Muslims. At the time when the Quran was revealed, it was the Christians of Abyssinia who are not Western Christians. They don't have this bogus Judeo-Christian alliance, no. The Christians of Abyssinia opened their arms for the Muslims and allowed us to make hijra and protected us. And today it is the Orthodox Christian world led by Russia. Yes, that is the Christian world which is proudly proclaiming we are Christians. Their primary identity is their faith. The Christians of the West, they don't have Christianity or religion as their primary identity. Don't you have any sense in your head? They are a secularized Christian world. Their primary identity is their nationality. Their religion is only for Sunday morning. Don't you have any sense in your head? When will you learn to think? How can they be the ones? How can they be the ones who proudly proclaim inna nasara? Their primary identity is not their faith. But these are Christians whose primary identity will be their faith. And that is the Orthodox Christian world. Zalika bi anna minhum kisisina wa rahmana wa annahum la yastakbirun. They will be closest in love and affection to Muslims because they have the institution of the priesthood still intact. On this side of the world, people don't follow their priests anymore. They follow Santa Claus. The priest also is following Santa Claus. And the priest no longer has any status in society that commands respect. But in the Orthodox Christian world, the priest still commands society a position of high eminence in society. And the institution of the priesthood remains intact. 
And also it is in that part of the world that they still preserve the monastic way of life, the monastery and the monks. And the attack of the government of Montenegro against the Orthodox Church in Montenegro is meant to take away the properties of all the monasteries, important monasteries. This is wickedness. And it is necessary for the Muslims of Montenegro and for the Muslims of the Balkans to stand up and protest side by side with your Christian brothers. Come out and demonstrate and protest against the wickedness of the Montenegrin government and show the whole Orthodox world that Islam and Christianity stand side by side in re resisting the oppression of NATO and, the, and the, uh, the Western Christian world. And so they have the institution of the monastic way of life, the monastery. But the Western Christian the monastery is now Kentucky Fry and McDonald's and, and um, what? Pizza Hut and a bingo hall. They're selling all their monasteries. But in the Orthodox Christian world, they still have great reverence for their monastic way of life. And the most monastery. And finally, the Quran says, وَأَنَّهُمْ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ These Christians do not have arrogance. They don't have the arrogance of those who want to rule the world from Washington and from London and Paris. And so Venezuela must bend its knee before them and Bolivia must bend its knee before them and Russia and China must bend their knees before them and Iran must bend their knees and Korea must bend their knees. And whoever does not bend their knee, we will wage war on you. You are rebel state, you are terrorists, and all kinds of rubbish. That's right. These Christians who will be closest in love and affection for you would not be an arrogant people. They would not have this arrogance of wanting to rule the world and impose their full spectrum dominance over all the rest of mankind. It is modern Western civilization, this new act on the stage of the world. These are the people who have the Judeo-Christian alliance. It is these Christians who want to rule the world. They are the ones with this arrogant agenda. They are the ones who have no more time for the monastic way of the life. And amongst them, the priest no longer has any status. They don't have their religion as their primary identity is their nationality. They're secularized people. And so very clearly the Quran is saying that it is the Orthodox Christian world. Those are the Christians. The Christians in the, in the Balkans are Orthodox Christians. These are the ones who will be closest in love and affection for Muslims in Akhir Zaman. And it is in recognition of this fact that I, your brother Imran, is calling on you. I'm making this, delivering this talk this morning and sending this message to Bosnia and Herzegovina, sending this message to Albania, sending it to Montenegro, to Macedonia, sending it to Serbia and to Croatia and to Slovenia, the whole of the Balkans, sending the message to all the Muslims, please listen to me to be rightly guided on this subject. Please be careful. Do not betray the Quran. Please come forward and stand side by side in supporting your Orthodox Christian brothers in resisting the oppression of the Montenegrin government. Now, finally, Allah says one more thing. We still have a little time. Uh, if you want to make, if you want to call and make any, ask any questions or any comments, you see a number at the back of the screen. We leave a little time today if you want to make any telephone calls. Um, uh, just put the number at the bottom of the screen, please, for IBN. Um, finally, this is what Allah says about the Christians in Akhir Zaman. That when Nabi Isa al-Islam, when Jesus was to be crucified, they wanted to crucify him. 
and he did not know what's going to happen. And so I last spoke to him. And the conversation was recorded. And that conversation is placed in the Quran in Surah to Ali Imran. And Allah spoke to him and said to him, Ya Isa, O oh Jesus, Inni mutawafiq, I'm going to take your soul, warafiyuka ilayya, and I'm going to raise you unto myself, wa mutahhiruka min alladheena kafaru, and I'm going to cleanse you of all that they have thrown against you, that world of kufr, of blasphemy, those who rejected him as the Messiah. وَجَعِلُوا الَّذِينَ تَبَعُوكَ فَوْكَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ And, oh Jesus, I'm going to take those who follow you. This is Allah speaking. The Lord God is speaking, and he's speaking to Jesus. I'm going to take those who follow you, oh Jesus, and raise them to a position of dominance over those who rejected you. Who are those who rejected him? Answer so the Jews, the state of Israel, and those who are in alliance with Israel, which is the West, which is NATO. So a Christian people in Akhir Zaman are going to be given military dominance over NATO. Did you hear that? Are you listening in the Balkans? Allah is saying in the Quran, Azza wa Jal. He is speaking to Nabi Isa Islam, to Jesus. And he's saying that I'm going to cause a Christian people, a people who follow you, O oh Jesus. I'm going to cause them to be raised to a position of dominance. Fawka al-lazina kafaru above those who rejected you, who committed kufr against you. And when I raise them to that position of dominance, which includes military dominance, they will remain in that position of dominance until the end of the world. Did you hear that? This is the Quran. This is the Quran. The Quran is truth, absolute truth. And so the world is going to witness a Christian people who will be blessed by Allah to become more powerful than NATO. Is that happening as yet? Of course it is. Of course it is. Today, Russia has a military might. The United States of America has to re respect, otherwise the United States will intervene in Venezuela long ago. United States for the last 200 years have been intervening helter-skelter all over South and Central America, toppling governments like dominoes. Read your history. But now, stop, halt. The United States cannot intervene militarily in Venezuela. Why? So long now they're waging war in Venezuela, all different kinds of warfare, but the government is still there. And Juan Guaido is still down there, yes, including all those who recognize him foolishly, so including here in Trinidad and Tobago as the president of Venezuela. Come election day, you see what's going to be your fate for your one Guaido fit. Come election day, you see what's going to be your fit. This is Imran Hussein talking to those who are the Guaidos in our midst. If the United States of America had not recognized that Russia now has that military might, the United States would already have intervened in Venezuela. The fact that the United States of America has not intervened militarily in Venezuela and cannot intervene militarily in Venezuela is proof. It is proof that Russia now has a military power that commands respect. That the United States dares not take on Russia in Venezuela. 
Here is the proof. Does an orthodox Christian people now command such military strength and power? But even the United States had to respect it. So then who are those people who are going to be raised by Allah to a position of dominance over NATO? It can only be Russia. Don't you have any sense in your head? What else can I do to teach you the Quran? And so there you are, we have two kinds of Christians in the Quran. The first are those with whom you are prohibited from maintaining friendship and alliance. And that is precisely what many Muslims are doing in the Balkans. My lecture is meant to wake you up and tell you you're in the wrong direction. You're going to the hellfire. Turn around. Don't be friends and allies with those Christians because Allah prohibits you. Allah prohibits you. If you're a Muslim and if you have love for the Quran and you have love for Nabi Muhammad then bow down and submit to the Quran and stop your friendship with NATO. Stop it. The Quran must be veiled. And then the Quran speaks of another kind of Christian. The one whose victory Muslims will celebrate, who is Rome. The one who will be closest in love and affection to Muslims. The one who will be raised by Allah to a position of dominance over NATO, for example. And those are the Orthodox Christians. That is Russia today. And so we have a duty now to stand side by side, shoulder to shoulder, with our Orthodox Christian brothers in the Balkans. Yes, I know there have been long years of bloodshed and hatred and bitterness, but it didn't start on the Christian side. It started on the side of Ottoman Empire who spent 600 years waging bogus jihad. You don't like to hear that, but that's the truth, the bitter truth. And now today you have to turn around, turn away from that history. And you have to turn to your Orthodox Christian brothers and reciprocate. Look at how this man ends his letter to me. We ask you to intervene because we consider you a just person and a real friend. That's how a prominent Orthodox Christian in Belgrade has written to me. We ask you to intervene because we consider you to be a just person and a real friend. Will you not reciprocate? And so I'm responding to the letter from Belgrade. And I devoted so much time today to the subject the Christian and the Muslim in Akhir Zaman. I have explained this subject 500,000 times already, and yet they will not listen to me. 500,000 times already I've explained this subject, and yet they will not listen to me. They, they have ears and they will not hear, they have eyes and they will not see, they have hearts and they will not understand. They're just like cattle. They're worse than cattle. These are the ones who are heedless. And those who are heedless. Allah says, They're destined for the hellfire. Huge numbers of human beings and jinn. They have eyes and yet cannot see. They have ears and yet cannot hear. They have hearts and yet do not understand. And we pray that these words of mine may reach you wherever you are, in the Balkans in particular, that you may heed the, the guidance from Allah in the Quran, and you may seize this opportunity to stand side by side, shoulder to shoulder with your Orthodox Christian mothers, in resisting the wicked oppression of the government of Montenegro. And may Allah help the oppressed. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad wa barik wa salim. Thank you. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
High blood pressure is as dangerous as an overpumped balloon. Measuring your blood pressure every day can save